The 6.5 is on the road here on the IBM Z17 launch day. Congratulations, everybody at IBM and your clients. We're, we are here at the One Madison, IBM's brand new building here in New York City. It is so new, I'm pretty sure that I smell paint. I, I don't know. <laughs> new carpet smell, Dan? Yeah, you got to love the energy walking into this place. Been here uh, on Investor Day, which we'll talk a little bit about. Now back here for the Z launch. Um, and Pat, it's just great to see kind of this transformation that IBM is going through. Um, this launch is a big moment for the company, but it's really more about the whole company being on this theme, this hybrid, AI, hybrid cloud and AI theme, and just seeing it continue. And uh, you know, that's probably a lot of the reason the success, you've seen it in the, in the share price, you've seen it in the business, you've seen it in the growth. Company's really been able to continue its path forward under Arvin's leadership. Yeah, it was a great conversation uh, with Z General Manager uh, Ross Morey. Check it out, link. Check that out, yeah, absolutely. But we're here for, I would call it the double click uh, on Deep Z17, dive. right, with Chris and Tina. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Long time listener, first time joiner. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> I love that. You're hired. No, this is great. Um, we've done a lot of conference Zoom calls, not Zoom calls, I don't know. Yeah. You got we, video calls uh, together, <laughs> right, going through. This is the first time kind of publicly going, mm. going through this, and I really appreciate uh, all of your time here, so thank you. Yeah, we're, we're really thrilled to be here, and yeah. thank you for your time. I know you uh, got, uh, got us early and often on uh, Z17 on some feedback, and we really appreciated your time and industry expertise there. I appreciate you letting me into the, into the inner sanctum uh, <laughs> when you did, so thank you. Wait, did you know something? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great spending some time, uh, Tina, actually with you. I was here on Investor Day. Uh, one mad, great event. It was a great day for the company. I think the, the market really got a, a flavor. And Z got some real stage time, which I know sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, depending yeah. on the yeah. cycle. You know, when we did talk to Ross Tina, we talked about how you know Z16 sort of shifted from a everything always being a bit of a cycle, quick spike, fall, yeah. to something that was much more sustained throughout Z16. I think 17 looks like it maybe is setting up the same way. But you know, at the event, Rick Lewis got on stage. You know, he really shed some light, brought this to the forefront. Talk us through the kind of IBM mainframe program and why has this been so successful, so important to the company for so long? Well, I think, uh, you know, when you look back at, you know, the enterprise applications that we've really supported, right? I mean, we made a commitment to our clients that they would never have to change their applications to keep running on the mainframe, and we've kept that kept that promise for almost 61 years, which is pretty incredible. Gosh. Um, and I think the clients Since you were are at 12. <laughs> 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 I think clients are at the heart of everything we do. So, uh, we really employ something called IBM design thinking, and it's, you know, I call it like obsessive behavior around getting our client input. So, on Z7 we have over 2,000 hours of you know, direct user research on the program. And uh, that's really how we decide what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, how we're going to deploy it. And I think you know, when you're really that obsessive around your client outcomes, that's, that's what happens. And uh, you know, we're a full stack program, right? So uh, chip to ship, as I like to say. So Chris will tell you a little bit about the chip. But we own the full stack. And there's really a lot of magic that can happen when you optimize that way. Yeah, isn't it? Ironic that that's kind of the new the new thing, right? That started, you know, this new thing that started seven or eight years ago on an industry basis. Uh, you've been doing for uh, forever. Yeah, and I love when they talk about a platform, and you know, we've, it's kind of been our approach for a long time now. Yeah, in the industry, it's kind of the I call it the accordion effect, where it's like aggregation. There's disaggregation. There's aggregation. But we are definitely in a point of aggregation. Uh, at this point. So there's like a mainframe version of AI factory that's... There we go. I, I, it. They, I mean, haven't, they don't use that term, but no, it's No, but you know, like you're at. jumping on the bandwagon of what gets all the attention, yeah. but I think it's a nice call out that, you know, they were doing this before it was cool. No, it is. So <laughs> hey, let's do the double click on Z17 here. Maybe we can talk about uh, what's new, uh, what's been modernized, and uh, bonus points for talking about benefits to clients. Sure, so uh, I hope everybody will see, but uh, one of our slogans is you can do more at the core. And so when you do more at the core, you'll have more MIPS, more capacity, more memory, all that, more at the core. Well, can you explain the core concept to, to everybody who might not be familiar, where that comes from? Yeah, so cores sort of have a double meaning, right? So there's cores on the processor, and so you'll be able to do more at that core, more AI acceleration, like I said, more capacity, more memory, more speed, more I.O., all that. But at the core of your business, yes, uh, you go. can really do 
more um, take advantage of the investment in the mainframe and the technology. I mean, and so to me, I, that's when we first started to talk about the messaging more at the core, I was like, yes, that's absolutely, we want our clients to be able to do more at the core of what matters to them. Um, so we're going to bring them, you know, more AI infrastructure, which is, you know, really timely and it's, you know, pretty incredible that our teams were thinking about this four or five years ago because that's absolutely. how long these take to make, right? So um, uh, we'll introduce a new uh, PCI attached uh, AI accelerator. We'll have uh, new capabilities of the on-chip acceleration. We're going to have I.O. acceleration on the processor um, and then full stack exploitation around security um, and generative A.I. capabilities with our Watson X platform. Yeah, more at the core. I love that. Coming yeah. to a T-shirt near you maybe one no, day. No, it's good. I mean, you even hear when CIOs talk about their applications, our core applications, right? They're those strategic applications. So listen, I'm not a marketing person, but uh, kudos to the marketing people. What? <laughs> oh, I was mostly product marketing. Oh, come on, uh, like come on! Hey, you're good. You're a good marketer. You get it. We we build products together. Six five. I, I know. Mean, we built I this know. product, anyways. But uh, well, let's talk a little bit more about your double, triple entendre. I'm not sure, but there's a lot of things we can do with core. Let's just put it that way in this industry. Um, so talk a little bit about kind of optimization of performance and scale. I mean, when we talked to Ross, Chris, he talks about like, you know, 45 billion, I think was the number of transactions or four and a half, four and a half or four, right? 450 four billion. 50, yeah, yeah transact yeah. billion. So yeah. yeah, I said yeah. a bit. A lot, lot of billion. 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 Lots right. and lots yeah. of transactions a day. And the thing is, is you know, we talked a lot about how like, it's, it's critical. These are not like, it's like, right. hey, I need to get gas in my car. Yeah. I need to, you know, pay the bill or I need to get on the, you know, and uh, book an air flight. Hey, all right. these things are happening. Yes. So talk about how you sort of think about that from building these cores for technological advancement. So, right, what you, you have to think about, it's, it's, as Tina says, full stack integration, but it's also the infrastructure baked into the hardware, right? We have, uh, to start with, we have these massive caches, right? One of the big updates we made yes. on, on Telum 2, 36 megabyte L2s, right? It's the biggest in the industry, 360 megabyte virtual L3. And that is to enable sort of heterogeneous workloads, large databases, lots of transactions to get to those sorts of 450 billion transactions numbers, right? You can't do that with standard off-the-shelf products, right? right? You have to have something that's custom built, custom designed for that whole stack integration for those solutions for the, the clients. I want to hear about, I want to hear about <coughs> Tellum 2, and I want to hear about Spire. Yes, okay, so we'll start with the core. So from, more from the core is, We've, we really focused on sustainability, performance per watt. We went after a much smaller core, more power efficient, right? So you increase the number of MIPS, increase the number of transactions you can handle and a better form factor, right? It's, it's smaller, it's more performant, it's, it's more effective. And I talked about the cash. We, we don't need to put the racks in the bottom of the ocean to keep them cool. I no, correct, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Maybe the exactly. Antarctic, not even the Antarctic, so. <laughs> Make it a, a little cool, a little yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. sure. Um, but so, so we really are improving, focusing on across all the dimensions. We're focusing on, on execution of, of transactions. We're focusing on scale. So that's where the cash has come in, ability to handle a lot all at the same time. Right, we did a big redesign in our, in our IO subsystem. Right, we onboarded a data processing unit for IO acceleration. Right, transformative from uh, a system integration, what that means in terms of what our cards look like and, and how we integrate all that. And then, as Tina said, IO performance, total bandwidth, total capacity, resilience improves when you talk about those sorts of things. And then, yes, now Spire cards, right? You got room in the IO, IO drawers for all those Spire cards um, for AI compute and AI processing. And you're talking someone order of two orders of magnitude more AI compute in the system thanks to the combination of the on-chip AI accelerator improvements and the Spire card. Different types of workloads, right? You yes, might, right. Have, might be doing the AI on chip for a certain set of workloads and then maybe some other on, on Spire. Well, it's really dialing it in for what that client workload needs, right? For a fraud detection, banking transaction, you want that on die accelerator, low latency, you don't want to be standing there waiting for your credit card to, to approve or, or disapprove your, or, you know, re reject, whatever the word is, um, your transaction, you want that to be quick. You want that to be within a millisecond, I think, are our, our, our agreements with That's our right. clients, right? But if you want more accuracy, you want to have that extra compute. If you want to get into Gen AI, you want to have those Spire cards sitting out in that, the IO subsystem so you have that raw AI compute capacity for whatever you want to do with it. And right now, we're trying to open up the aperture for what our clients can do, right? And that's what Z17 will enable. They'll be able to go and explore what they can do from an AI perspective in ways that they couldn't before. Now that's great. So, um, I'm just 
asking all the questions, Dan, just no. to leave no time for you. No, this is no, great. No, I'm just kidding. You're, uh, you're, I, had a, uh, I had a. I wasn't there. <laughs> I, was at, uh, I was at Mobile World Congress, had a great conversation uh, with Vodafone, yes, and sorry. they talked about uh, quantum safe mm -hmm. uh, computing. And it's kind of a kind of a conundrum, which is, you know, we can debate how many years uh, we are out, yes. but um, the uh, installed base and what you have is gonna live for a long time. So regardless of what year, N plus question mark, yes. um, it has to be incorporated in there. Can you talk about how you're incorporating uh, Z17, what the latest quantum safe technology, maybe security, uh, as a whole, and you know, Dan made a great point. We were talking with Ross, oh. just sometimes how we um, don't fully factor in um, how important the the security element of this is. And it seems to me that you add an AI capability to that, um, it needs to, it just needs to be more secure based on what it can do. Yes. So I, I I'll, I'll talk about from a hardware perspective, but I also want to take a step back from a historical perspective. You got to remember, I mean, IBM Z is, is the securest platform, right? That is what it's designed for, that's what it's intended for. And we keep moving the ball forward, right? When you talk about sort of NIST standards for encryption and technology, right? Those are IBM research algorithms yeah. that go into deciding what those standards look like. Right. And those are already baked into things that we currently do and we just continue to improve and upgrade that. So, right, specifically, you, you, so you, you start with that base and then you go, how do you improve generationally? And we do things like the SMP cabling that we have going from drawer to drawer is now encrypted and quantum safe. And you know the, what we store in memory is now encrypted and, or has been upgraded and is quantum safe. So you, you continuously improve across every dimension that you can identify where there might be something that, yes, to your point, N plus, or however many years out into the future it's gonna be, you've gotta protect against that uh, because you want to maintain the security and the, and, the, and the confidence of your clients. And then yes, from a end user perspective, right? I want to know that my banking transactions are safe. I want to know yes. that my credit card information, my medical information, all of that is secure and protected. And that's all sitting on, a, on an IBM Z somewhere. Just to add to what Chris said, so not only did we create this technology and use it to protect the infrastructure and then create the algorithms uh, for our clients to deploy, it's a heavy lift. So we created tools that help them figure out where their calls are, mm -hmm. to create the inventory, and to get started. It's important that they get started. So really looking at it holistically like that, I think is like really is what is leading to some of our success to your question yeah. earlier. Yeah, and it's been good uh, from a standpoint of as, you know, I know this isn't a quantum announcement, but IBM is doing a lot of things to advance the quantum yeah. field. Quantum safe. We've heard some of those sort of, oh, here's this new supremacy thing, and it's going to break the Bitcoin encryption. But what I'm saying is, like, these transaction type of services, though, I mean, this is going to be one of the attack vectors. Is going to be where money. Yeah, it'll be the primary attack. And so vector, you probably. having though, like IBM having the research business and the quantum business and the Z, like, kind of, you really do become a, a bit of a panacea for all the things needed. We're secure. working super closely with our research organization. I mean, they're part of, I think, of some of the, the success of IBM as well. I mean, uh, partnering with them on like these very far leading technologies. So they do, they get them out front and then we bring them to the product. And that's a really great partnership we have. Uh, Quantum Safe is a perfect example. Well, we of can that. keep Z cool by putting it in the fridge with this, <laughs> the, the quantum. Uh, yeah. So, but um, nice try there, buddy. I'm <laughs> no, building. I mean, I'm drawing a picture. No, I know. I'm post it on no, Twitter. No, it's, it's cool. Uh, well, we it's kind it. of refrigerator yeah. rack. I got you. You know, one thing that that, that I have been observing that I think should make IBM clients sleep well at night is not just that IBM takes a standard off the shelf. You're helping to create yes. the standard. Exactly. You're researching what goes into mm -hmm. that. You're a leader in, in that community. And I definitely picked that up uh, at MWC, uh, mm -hmm. talking uh, with, I, I know it, it, it's MWC, but you're, you're part of a lot of different standards yeah. organization that is doing the base research Yeah, um, across the this. board. I mean, in our IO technology, we have distinguished engineers on like the FICON spec board. Uh, Ann Dames, who's our distinguished engineer for this uh, crypto technology, was just asked to join the NIST board. So we are really leading the way and you know, all driven by what we want our clients to be able to achieve. So yeah. that's what well, makes it exciting to me. Well, one of the things that you want your clients to achieve is having you know basically perfect reliability. I know there's no such thing as yes. 100, right? It's always some variant of nines. But in However the, main, many nine in the mainframe, you want it to be many, many, many 
yeah. nine. So as we sort of wrap up here, Chris, just talk a little bit about how the 17, Z17 is enhancing what's already been sort of the industry standard for reliability. Yeah, and, and so again, just, just set the stage for everybody, right? You're, you're talking eight nines of, of availability, right? That translates to for over, the, it, this machine's running day after day, year after year, right? Eight nines of availability turns into an hour of downtime out of every 11,000 years. So <laughs> since the beginning of civilization, one hour of downtime. Now think about how often your laptop crashes or you have to reboot your phone, right? And then put that Twice in. Twice today? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's the kind of scale we're talking about here. And from a Z17, so, so to get that, you have layers and layers from the software, from the application layer, the operating system, firmware, and yes, down into the hardware. So we're. We're focusing on, at least from my perspective, from our hardware, we're working with our technology team, trying to identify any potential vectors that could create reliability problems. We're improving um, what we have from a core recovery, from a reliability perspective, down in the hardware, it, to the point where the software doesn't even know that certain things are happening. We just report it back and say, hey, this thing happened, just so you're aware. We took a core offline, put it back online. Nobody even knows. Yeah. That's those are the kinds of things, and you do you layer that across the stack, and that's the only real way you get to those eight nines of availability. Chris is also driving a little observability in there. If you didn't catch it. <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> well, good, good fun, Tina. Chris, want to thank you so much. Congratulations on the Z17 launch. Thank we look you. forward to sort of following the the journey, continuing to have these conversations over the next uh, few years. And then, of course, Pat will start to give you the great advice on Z18. <laughs> yes. We look forward to it. Oh, gosh. It, it, did we talk about a Z18? I guess we're allowed to do that now, aren't we? Uh, well, we'll start that next We're not week. really exactly. supposed to, but, but you know, we'll use our 7G phones. I and did we'll see the slide. It had Z18. On our, so. on our portable, but we're already personal, working on it. You know on our that. personal oh, yeah, quantum absolutely. computers that we put in our bags. <laughs> we're getting there. We're moving to the future. But for now, the future, Z17, congratulations. Thank Come you. back, join us again soon. And thank you so much for being part of the 6.5. We are on the road here. We are at 1 Madison, IBM's flagship location in New York City for the Z17 launch day. We appreciate you being part of our community. Subscribe, watch all our coverage here from the event, and of course, all of our 6.5 content. We appreciate you being part of our community, but we gotta say goodbye, so we'll see you later.